In this video, let's take a look at the mounting lifecycle methods. That is, methods which are called when an instance of a component is being created and inserted into the DOM. And we will be going through them in the order that they are invoked. So first, we have the constructor. It is a special function that will get called whenever a new component is created. Now what is the constructor used for? Well, the constructor is perfect for initializing state or binding the event handlers to the class instance. What you shouldn't do in a constructor is cause side effects. For example, you should never make HTTP requests from within a constructor. There are also two important points to keep in mind when it comes to defining your own constructor. The first one is that you have to call a special function called super. This will call the base class constructor. In our component, we have access to this dot props only after we have initially called super passing in the props as an argument. The second point is that constructor is also the only place where you're expected to change or set the state by directly overwriting this dot state fields. In all other scenarios, you have to use this dot set state. So constructor, set initial state, bind event handlers, and don't cause any side effects like making Ajax calls, for example. The second method we have is a static method get derived state from props. Now the React documentation classifies this method as a rarely used lifecycle method. This method is basically used when the state of the component depends on changes in props over time. So let's say you have a component, but the initial state of the component depends on the props being passed to the component. In such a scenario, you can use this method to set the state. Since this method is a static method, it does not have access to the this keyword. So you cannot call this dot set state within this particular method. Instead, you simply have to return an object that represents the new state of the component. Again, what you shouldn't do is cause side effects. For example, fetching data from an endpoint. So get derived state from props, use it when state depends on changes in props over time, and also do not cause any side effects. The third method is the render method, which by now we are quite familiar with. The render method is the only required method in a class component. In the render method, we simply read this dot props and this dot state and return the JSX which describes the UI. The render function is a pure function. For the given props and state, it should always render the same UI. What you should not do here is changing the state of the component or interacting with the DOM or making any Ajax calls. Since it is the render method JSX which also contains the other children components, Right after the parent render method, the children components lifecycle methods are also executed. We will see this order of execution very shortly in code. So render method, read props and state and return the JSX. The final method which is part of the mounting phase is component did mount. This method will be called only once in the whole lifecycle of a given component and it is invoked immediately after a component and all its children components have been rendered to the DOM. This method is the perfect place to cause side effects. You can interact with the DOM or perform any Ajax calls to load data. So component did mount is a good place to perform initialization that requires DOM nodes and also load data by making network requests. All right, now that we have a good understanding of the four methods and what can or cannot be done in each of the methods, let's head over to the code and see their order of execution. 
Back in VS Code, I'm going to start off by creating a new file. The file name is going to be lifecycleA.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the React snippet RCE to create a class component. I will get rid of the named export though and include the component in app component. Now let's add the different lifecycle methods. First we have the constructor. I'm going to use the react snippet rconst to create a new constructor. Within the state I will simply add a property name initialized to Vishwas. We don't really need the state in this video but we will make use of it in the next video. What we do need though is a console log statement to understand the order of execution. So within the constructor, console.log lifecycle a constructor. The second method we have is the static method, get derived state from props. So static get derived state from props. And this method gets access to props and state as parameters and has to return the new state or null. To keep it simple, let's return null. And to track the execution order, I will add a console log statement which says lifecycle A get derived state from props. Make sure to include the static keyword or else the method will be ignored. The third method we have is the render method which is already present. In the JSX, I will simply add the text lifecycle A and I will add the console log statement to track the execution order. Lifecycle A render. Now the final method is component did mount. I'm going to add it before the render method, component did mount. And within the body, we will simply log to the console, lifecycle A, component did mount. Now let's save the file and head to the browser. If I open the console, you can see the order of execution. First, we have the constructor. Then we have get derived state from props. After that, the render method and finally, component did mount. This is the order of execution during the mounting phase. Now let's see what happens when the component has a child component. I'm going to go back to VS Code and create a new file. lifecyclebjs I'm going to copy the content from lifecycleA.js and paste it in lifecyclebee.js. After that, I will replace all occurrences of lifecycle A with lifecycle B. And in the lifecycle A component, I will include lifecycle B component. So parentheses and closing div tag, move this inside and then add lifecycle B component. So we have lifecycle A as the parent component and lifecycle B as the child component. Let's see what happens to the order now. If you take a look at the console, you can see that first we have lifecycle A constructor. Then lifecycle A get derived state from props. That is followed by the render method of lifecycle A. But after that, we have the lifecycle methods of the child component, which is lifecycle B. So constructor get derived state from props, render and component did mount. Because the render method knows about the children components, the execution passes on to the children after the parent component render method. The child component methods are then executed in order. Constructor, get derived state from props, render and component did mount. 
After the child component has completely rendered, the parent component component did mount is executed. It is really important to know the order of execution because it helps you avoid writing code that might have unexpected behavior. So this is the order of execution during the mounting phase. In the next video, let's take a look at the different lifecycle methods and their order of execution during the updating phase of a component. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.